Hi, this is Michael Paul, New Orleans Scottish Rite College. Um, in several previous videos, uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, bringing someone in to your lodge or valley or whatever body to address the lodge and, and speak on a, a, a various topics and how this is a benefit to any Masonic education program. Uh, in talking with several people lately, uh, realize that there's a difference between knowing what you should do and knowing how to do it. So as someone who has been on both sides of the podium, uh, giving lectures and also uh, finding people and arranging to bring someone in for a lecture, I thought I might be able to do a video on some tips and tricks that might make the whole process of bringing someone into your lodge or valley to give a talk a little bit easier. As with anything that we do in masonry, planning is really at everything. Uh, if you plan something out, there's far less chance of something coming up and biting you than if uh, you just fly by the seat of your pants. And this is going to play especially in setting up uh, a lodge speaker. And really, to start with, there's two types of functions that you would bring a large speaker into. Uh, one would be a regular event, a recurring event, and the other would be a created event. Now, a regular recurring event would be one that, say, is a past master's night or a, uh, maybe a large birthday or something that happens every year and you normally would have some sort of event for that night. Uh, a special called event would be just the master decides that on the second meeting in July you're going to have a speaker or an educational program. So the topics that you want to think about is important in the sense that if you have a regular recurring event it's possible that your subject matter might be limited. And what I mean by that is, say that you're having a large birthday. Well, you may bring in a speaker who gives a uh, talk on, say, um, something having to do with the Shriners, or it could be uh, a matter of Scottish Rite history. And both talks might be very interesting, but it wouldn't really have anything to do with your lodge or the history of your lodge or its birthday. So you want to think about what you're calling an event for and the topic of the, of the lecture that you want to have. So when you're planning these things, you want to try to make it that the event matches the lecture. And this will pertain sometimes in, in who you bring in to talk. If you bring someone in who is uh, a prominent officer, say, in the Shriners, or a Scottish Rite historian, you want to give them the opportunity to shine and to do the best that they can do. And if you bring in the Shriner and ask him to give a talk on a Scottish Rite history or the Scottish Rite historian to talk on a Shrine, you may not get the best talk out of this person because you're not utilizing them to the best of their abilities. So you always want to plan an event and match up the speaker with the event. When you're planning for a speaker, a good time frame is about six months in advance. If you're a junior warden or senior warden and you're planning out the year, it's fine to say, I'll have a speaker at such and such meeting. And you may have this plan a couple of years in advance. But usually you wouldn't want to contact a speaker before, say, six to eight months in advance for, of an event. Um, giving that much time, most speakers, even if it's a national speaker, there's enough time that they can set up their schedule. If you wait until a month before, you may not be able to acquire a speaker that may have something booked up already for, the, for that time. So you want to give about six, eight months time for a speaker. And there's different procedures that you'd use if you're going to have a speaker that's local. And when I say local, that's someone who usually is in the area and can drive home within a half hour to an hour from, from the lodge meeting. Anything beyond that you'd want to say is out of town and you want to make accommodations available for them. 
When you're bringing a speaker in from out of town, you have to consider hotel arrangements and travel. Uh, hotel accommodations, you want to get a nice hotel, and that doesn't mean you have to break the bank by getting the most expensive hotel in the area, but at the same time, you don't want uh, the least. You want to get a nice, decent, mid-range hotel for the person, and setting it up, you want to have them uh, know if they need any special accommodations to start with. Uh, if they're bringing someone, or if they're becoming alone, or finding out all details for the accommodations, and you should have this set up for them that all they would need to do is show up at the hotel, give their ID, and their room is paid for and taken care of. Travel can be a little bit different. Um, if someone is flying in, uh, I've heard different cases uh, on this, and the security is, is, is a changeable thing, so you might have to go on a case by case. It's always best if you can take care of everything ahead of time, that the individual could go to the airport and simply pick up his tickets. Security sometimes does not allow this. They want the person who buys the ticket to be the same person who picks up the ticket. So it, it, in cases where, and this could change from week to week really, but if you need to have the person buy their own ticket for an airline, uh, you should have enough time in advance that you can send them a check ahead of time to cover the airline. They shouldn't be responsible for paying out money for, for an airline ticket. If you cannot send it out ahead of time, get them a check to reimburse them for this as soon as possible. Someone coming in to speak should not have to pay to come in to do you a favor. And this is what the, uh, the uh, Masonic speakers, very few of them charge anything to speak. But it's expected, and it should be by fairness, to cover all their expenses. Um, if they're coming in by car, um, then you should know the distance and should cover their mileage. And, and if they need to spend, if they're coming in by car from such a distance that they may have to spend another night somewhere in between, you want to cover that hotel as well. So you want to make the whole experience for the speaker as easy and convenient for them as possible. If they're coming by bus or train, same thing applies. If at all possible, have it so that they can just simply show up at uh, the depot or wherever they're going at the station and pick up the tickets. If this is not possible, have it prepaid or send them a check in advance to cover it or as soon as possible. Another aspect of the accommodations that you'd have for a speaker, um, no speaker should be able or be required to find their way from the airport or the bus station or driving into town from there to the hotel. Uh, if someone is coming in by plane, someone should be there to pick them up and drive them to their hotel. Uh, same as if they're coming on bus. If they are driving in, you should have clear instructions to make sure that they know exactly where the hotel is. Someone who's coming in at, say, an airport or a bus or a train, uh, if your hotel, a lot of hotels will check in town will be 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Find this out in advance. If the person is coming in, say, 10 o'clock in the morning, and their check-in time for the hotel is at 3 o'clock, well, you don't want to just pick them up and drop them off at the hotel and have them sit in the lobby for a number of hours. What you'd want to do is pick them up whatever time it is, take them somewhere, give them lunch, ride around with them, show them the area, maybe show them the lodge ahead of time, Make it a nice event for the person who's coming in. Give them the courtesy of showing them around and not just simply depositing them somewhere and let them wait. Whoever is picking up the uh, lecturer, make sure that they have the understanding that they are showing them around and that they are appreciative of what the speaker is doing. If they're driving into town, be in contact with them check up with them and find out how things are going, if they need, need uh, any help finding directions or such. But in all cases, 
stay in touch with them and make sure that everything is as smooth and easy for them as possible. So the big point is in the setup process, you want to make sure that whoever you uh, request giving a talk, everything is taken care of for them and they want to have as few surprises as possible. By the same turn, the Lodge wants to have as few problems or surprises as possible. Um, so when you first agree with someone and make the arrangements, uh, you want to have them on a certain day and you've contacted them, say, six months in advance and you set up all the, uh, 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 the details what you want to do is stay in touch with them and you want to contact them a few times before the event and you especially want to contact them a month before and then several times during the week and the reason I'll say this is I knew a case where someone was contacted to give a talk out of town and it was a good six months ahead of time and it was agreed to and the worshipful master of the lodge did not contact him again. He just simply knew the date and they made all the arrangements. Well, two weeks before the talk, the lecturer had a heart attack and he was in the hospital. Well, the worshipful master hadn't contacted him and just assumed that he was going to show up and all of a sudden they're at the airport, no one's there, and the man was in the hospital and he wasn't thinking about anything but it was all a disaster and it could have been avoided to a degree if they had known, if they had stayed in touch, if the master had contacted him a couple of weeks ahead of time, even a week ahead of time, he would have known and they could have scrambled and at least done something to prepare the lodge for the loss of the speaker or the speaker not being available. If you don't stay in touch with the person, things can happen. And if something does happen and you're caught unprepared, it makes the lodge and the master look bad. That's the last thing you want to do. So in each case, you want to stay in touch with him. You want to have the phone number for the speaker. You want to know details. You want to stay in touch with him through all stages up until the time he comes into the lodge building to give the speech. You want to know where he is and what's going on and in case there's any surprises that you need to know of. Now when it comes time for the speaker to come into the lodge, there are several different formats that you can use and the format you use is up to the lodge. There are cases where the speaker will speak directly in the lodge room. There'll be times where the lodge will be out and there'll be at a dinner set up. Uh, it could be public, it could be for the lodge only. All of these details you work out in advance and there are different procedures that you'd use. Um, in the case where you're having a dinner lecture, what happens is you could be, it could be either in the lodge room itself where you have a table set up or it could be at a restaurant or a club, wherever you have it set up, if it's a dinner setting, there's something that you really should be aware of. And I remember a, a, a time where I was invited to give a talk and uh, it was set up at a very nice restaurant and it was prime rib that they were serving. And the menu is insignificant because it could be anything. But this case happened to be prime rib and I was looking forward to it. And uh, everyone was sitting around and they brought me up and I was sitting at the head table and uh, they came and they took the orders and they, they brought my plate of food and I had just sat down and I started to cut it and it looked great. The master stood up and he says, now we'll have our speaker. I hadn't even eaten. So I, I rushed and I gave a talk and by the time I came back, everyone was finished eating. I hadn't eaten anything and my food was cold. So what you want to do is if you're giving a dinner talk, have the talk either before or after the meal, preferably after. Don't put the, the speaker in a position where you invite him for a nice dinner and he doesn't get a chance to eat it. Don't have the discussion or the talk or lecture during the dinner. 
because then it means that the, the speaker himself will be shortchanged on that. If the speaking event is going to take place in the lodge itself, and if the lodge is at labor when the lecture is given, uh, there are certain things that you should think about ahead of time to make the event more dignified and more receptive to the lecturer and that, that he appreciates your uh, attention a little more. And one of the things, if a meeting is going on and the lecturer comes in and he begins and the lodge opens and they just go straight through regular business, no mention of the speaker, and they go through read the bills and do this, uh, and then it's like one, two, three, four, and he's just one of a number of things that are happening. It creates an atmosphere that the lecture itself is not all that important. What you want to do is make it clear to everyone, including the, the speaker, that his coming to your lodge is important to you, and his coming to the lodge and what he's doing is important. And he should be received as any dignitary is received, because he's in fact doing the lodge a favor by presenting his material and education lecture for the lodge. Um, one of the ways to do it, titles are something that should never be demanded, but they are a sign of respect, and it's classy. It shows respect for a worshipful master to address a brother by any of the titles he's attained, and that would be worshipful brother, right worshipful brother, most worshipful brother, whatever degree or whatever title he has attained. And what you need to understand is if you are bringing a brother in from another jurisdiction, titles vary. In some jurisdictions, a brother who has served one time, 25 years ago, in one appointed Grand Lodge office, a minor office, may be a right worshipful brother for life. So you need to find out what the title the brother has in his jurisdiction. And even though it may not be a title that in your jurisdiction you would extend to someone, if this brother in his jurisdiction has a certain title, it doesn't cost anything to address him by that. Give him the courtesy of addressing him by the title that is valid for his jurisdiction. And doing so, uh, bring the brother up before the altar, introduce him to the lodge, talk a little bit about him, take a little time to find out a little bit about the brother, make him feel that his coming to the lodge is important to you and special, bring him up to sit in the east. And then when the time for his lecture, bring the lecture set up however you have it, if you have a podium, wherever your setup is for the lodge, Bring him to that, and how you proceed depends on the time, the lodge, the custom. You can have him speak, if it's a tile uh, speech, have it in the tile lodge. If it lodges at refreshment, have it at refreshment. What you should do is make sure that the speaker knows ahead of time if there, it will be a reserved tiled only lecture or if it will be a public lecture so he'll know how to uh, adjust his his speech. Uh, all of these things are the finer points that make an event meaningful and makes the speaker appreciative of what you're doing. At the end of the speech you should always have some sort of token that you give to the brother most brothers, as I mentioned, do not charge for coming to a lodge. If one does, that's not exactly an unfair thing, but you know this in advance. But a speaker is coming to help you. It's taking the time out of his day, and it's an effort on his part designed to help you. Give him a little token, a plaque, a certificate, some sort of sign of appreciation that you know what he's done and you appreciate what he's done. This goes towards the total effect that you'll be setting for the entire lodge. So if you're looking to 
find a lodge speaker for your, your lodge or your valley or whatever. Um, good places to check are a lot of the social media sites. You'll see prominent masons and you could find them and contact them directly. You could also call, uh, contact organizations, the Philalethi Society, the Masonic Society, uh, Masonic Service Association. All of these are places that you might be able to utilize and contact and they might be able to put you in touch with the speaker. I'll have uh, links below showing how to contact these people. And there's one last aspect that I wanted to mention. Um, a lot of times if you contact someone, if you contact a Masonic author for say, uh, they may be able to bring books that they've published into your lodge to sell to the members. This is a positive thing, it makes books available, but there's another aspect. The whole thing we've been talking about here is when the lodge desires to have an event and they contact someone to bring them in. There's another case where uh, an event may be dropped in your lap. Let's say a Masonic author has released a book and he is going around on a tour of such. There's been cases where such individuals will contact a lodge and say, hey, look, I'm going to be in town on this date. Uh, do you have a meeting? And if you have a meeting, uh, can I come talk to your lodge and make the book available? Well, in such a case, that's a benefit to the lodge. You get a uh, event and you get books that maybe you could save shipping and handling on, maybe benefit to the, to the lodge to see the book, and they can have uh, an instantaneous event. In such cases where someone is coming into town already, and they have plans to do this already, it doesn't require the lodge to put an outlay of funds for travel or hotel expense, because the individual is coming anyway and they initiated the contact, so you just simply say, yes, come. If you have a charge for dinner, you waive that, of course, but the lodge is not really required to pay for travel and housing for someone who's all coming in anyway and initiates the contact. But in any event, uh, having a lodge speaker is always beneficial. It adds to every event. In all cases, you should show proper respect to whoever is, is, is in the lodge. You, the lodge is due respect, but so is the one coming in to help you present this event. And if all works out, it's usually always a very beneficial time. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate your views. If you have any comments or thoughts, please share them. Please like the channel, subscribe. And if you find these video series of any value, share them and let others know about it. And I look forward to talking with you next time.